un technological fix fixes include uh, a fix for the greenhouse effect of, uh, uh, that's been suggested, a parasol at L1. L1 is the Lagrange point, about a hundredth of the distance between the Earth and the Sun, at which an object could, could uh, stay in, er in, in, in orbit for one Earth year. Uh, a 2,000 kilometer, 1,200 uh, mile across uh, parasol at L1 would look like a permanent spot on the face of the Sun. Uh, and then we could go on burning fossil fuels to our heart's content without worrying about global warming. Uh, it's uh, technically feasible. We just uh, had the Genesis craft come back from L1, from three years at L1, so we know how to do it, but it's a foolish idea. Uh, we've already seen that the f fate of the Earth is not a consequence of the solar flux at the, at the face of the Earth, and a 2% reduction in the flux at the face of the Earth is the last thing that we'll need for a future energy-starved world. Uh, another idea is to sequester the carbon dioxide. Uh, that's, that, that idea has a certain resonance. Um, uh, it's not obvious where you would put all the carbon dioxide. Uh, people have suggested putting it in coal and gas wells, and that's being done, but it's not enough space at, by any means for all the carbon dioxide that we pumped into the atmosphere. And so that is a real problem. Uh, solar energy has got to be part of the future. Uh, Hydroelectric energy is solar energy because the, uh, the uh, water in, in, a, in a reservoir uh, is under tremendous pressure because of the weight of the water above it. Uh, the pressure drives a turbine that generates electricity. The water runs out into the, uh, onto the land and evaporates and because of the sun evaporates and falls back into the reservoir again. And so it's a renewable form of energy. Um, unfortunately, we've built dams just about everywhere we can. We can't build more dams to substitute for the missing oil, so that's not a solution. Uh, wind is becoming popular. Uh, it will become more popular as uh, technological improvements in, in uh, wind turbines uh, take over. But uh, it, wind is too intermittent and too undependable in most places to substitute for oil, so that will not work. Uh, biomass means growing things and burning it. That's the way we lived until 200 years ago. Uh, it will always contribute to, uh, to our resources of energy. The trouble with biomass is that it's extremely inefficient. Only one or two tenths of one percent of the energy falling on a piece of land gets converted into chemical potential energy by biomass. Uh, that's not enough. The gold standard is photovoltaics, and that they convert roughly 10% of the energy that fall on them into, uh, into electrical energy, and that's more like it. However, in order to replace the 10 terawatts of fossil fuel that we, we saw we, we burned in the previous slide, uh, it would require 220,000 square kilometers of photovoltaics at 10%. All the photovoltaics made up to the present time would probably cover about 10 square kilometers. So making 200,000 kilometers worth of, uh, square kilometers worth of, uh, of solar cells is a tremendous, tremendous uh, undertaking. Uh, I don't know whether we're capable of doing it. Nuclear has got to be part of the problem, part of the solution as well. Uh, geothermal energy is nuclear energy because the, the, the interior of the Earth is heated by natural radioactivity. Unfortunately, geothermal sources uh, uh, can be used for space heating, but to use them for power is much more difficult. There are very few places where a geothermal source approaches close enough to the surface of the Earth to be tapped in that way, uh, and most of those places are already tapped. So they will always be useful, but not a substitute for oil. Uh, nuclear fission is the kind of nuclear energy that we've been using up to now. Um, unfortunately, to, to make 10 terawatts, that's, that's the figure of merit from the use of fossil fuel, to make 10 terawatts worth of energy from nuclear fission would require 10,000 gigawatt plants. A gigawatt is about the biggest plant you can build, and it takes 10,000 of those to, to make uh, 10 terawatts. The, the idea of making 10,000 new nuclear plants is almost unimaginable. The United States has not made any new nuclear plants in the past 20 or 30 years. There are now permits out for 20 or so new ones, but not for 10,000. Nuclear fusion, on the other hand, is a promising solution because one gallon of seawater contains enough deuterium to substitute for uh, 300 gallons of gasoline. So if you could make nuclear uh, fusion work, 
uh, it would solve the problem forever, uh, effectively. But uh, we've worked very hard, and that's the one uh, form of, of alternative energy into which real money has been put over the years, and we're no closer to it than we were 50 years ago. 50 years ago, nuclear fusion was 25 years in the future. It is still 25 years in the future, and it is likely to remain 25 years in the future. Uh, even if you solve the problem with nuclear fusion, you wouldn't solve the problem of transportation because um, a nuclear car is not in the, in the works. But uh, advanced batteries can be charged with uh, the unlimited electricity that you would get from nuclear fusion. Uh, you could also hydro hydrolyze water to make hydrogen, and the hydrogen can be used as a fuel or turned into other fuels, and so on. So, we understand the basic principles that would be necessary to uh, have a civilization like ours without fossil fuel. The problem is we're not moving in that direction. This is a picture of the United States uh, uh, at 23.15 Eastern Standard Time on August 14th, 2003. It shows the, 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 the great blackout. Uh, a tree falling uh, in Ohio caused this much of the United States to be blacked out. That shows how fragile our civilization is. Uh, this picture was undoubtedly faked, uh, but uh, it nevertheless reminds us of how fragile our civilization is. Scientists, when they analyze a situation, are supposed to make a prediction. You hope your prediction will be correct, and you certainly don't believe that making the prediction will affect whether or not it's correct. I'm going to make a prediction of a different nature. My prediction is that civilization as we know it will come to an end sometime in this century when the fuel runs out. I certainly hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that making the prediction will help make me wrong because some of you will go out and try to solve this problem. The United Nations uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change on February 2nd, 2007 said global warming due to human activity is real. It's time to stop the debate and do something about it. Uh, and so that made it official, global warming is real. In the 2006 State of the Union address, George W. Bush said we are addicted to oil, which meant that he was beginning to perceive the problem. In the 2007 State of the Union address, he said 20% reduction in oil use by 2017. He called for these to be done. Clean coal, solar, and wind. Clean, safe nuclear. Plug-in and hybrid vehicles. Clean diesel and biodiesel. Ethanol from wood chips, grasses, and agricultural waste, and so on. And so he's, he, he, he perceives there's a problem and comes up with a uh, a solution, not anything that would solve the problem, but uh, a few baby steps in the right direction. In the 2008 State of the Union address, he said, to build a future of energy security, we must trust in the creative genius of American researchers and entrepreneurs and empower them to pioneer a new generation of clean energy technology. Our security, our prosperity, and our environment all require reducing our dependence on oil. And so, uh, even the President of the United States is aware of this problem, but he s seems helpless to do anything about it. I, as a mere physicist, as I said, uh, am also aware of the problem and wanted to do something about it. And I thought, what can I do about it? And I decided that the only thing I could do was to write a book. And so I've written a book, and I thank you very much.